Hi, this is Shauna with the Jeffco DeAngelis Foundation, and we are here again with Jeff Pearson, a former principal, but now he's the executive director of school safety for Jeffco Public Schools. And we want to talk about some really important subjects um, here, one being sexting, if you've never heard of it, the other being sextortion. Um, both, of course, involve child sex abuse materials. And there's some really important things on this. So the first one, Let's go ahead and just jump into sexting to start out with right now. Um, this is a problem at lots of schools. Uh, you may not be aware that your child is participating in it. This is why it's really important to have those conversations, but um, this is what happens when a child, so who, someone who's under 18, uh, can send an image of themselves unclothed. So to another child as well, or to an adult. Um, that is sexting. And sexting involving child sex abuse and materials, those who are under 18, um, certainly will be talking to our district attorney. But Jeff, can you talk to us about if I have found out that my child received an, in, an image on their cell phone or sent one, what do I do? Well, I think it's important to, to first note that Students, parents, any adult, any student or any kiddo needs to understand once you put something out there through social media, it's almost guaranteed to be there. Uh, whether you erase it or not, somehow somebody's saving that image and it's almost there for life, right, forever. So I think, number one, we have to think about and, and help educate our students and our young people about the decisions they make, um, whether it's being pressured into sending something or not. If you receive an image, or as a parent, your son or daughter comes to you or you hear about it or you overhear. So such and such is, is sharing these images. It needs to be immediately reported to um, an authority figure, a trusted adult. We have an amazing tool here in Colorado called Safe to Tell, where we get a lot of amazing tips around some of these issues around sexting that are going on. But it's very important that you don't, number one, pass it along further, that you don't share it with anybody, but you report it immediately. Do the best you can not to, to delete it, um, but save it right away and get it to somebody because then, then you're going to want to obviously remove that at some point. But it's important that authorities have access to that so that they can investigate it and move forward. Um, but the most important thing is to not sit and wait on it. As soon as you get it, as soon as you get information about somebody's doing it, report it immediately because the more, the longer it progresses, the more that's shared, the more other people have access to that. And then it becomes a much bigger issue down the road. That's, that's a really important point. And we know only one in five parents are having these conversations with their kids. Um, and we know that the sexting and sextortion issues are spread across demographics. So it is not just, you know, an area of poverty where this is happening. It is even happening in very wealthy areas. In fact, it's pretty popular in some of those wealthy areas. So it's important to do to know this. It's also important to know. Um, Oh gosh, uh, we'll share some resources from NECMEC on you know how to contact to get those images removed from the internet. Um, so we'll share some of those kind of things. But the sextortion issue, a lot of times things are happening in the private messages with our kids on Instagram or Snapchat. Um, and someone who they think is a fellow teenager is really an adult um, uh, pretending that they're somebody who they're not. Um, and once they get an image from a child um, or uh, even uh, adults as well, in sextortion, they then pressure and um, kind of bully the other person into sending more images. So child sex abuse material, which would be images of kids who are um, under 18, so or even adults and threaten them that they're going to put it out publicly and ruin them um, and they want money or more uh, images to be able to use. So are you seeing this a lot um, with our kids in schools? You know, the uptick is unbelievable around not just sexting, but as you said, the sextortion, right? And what we're seeing is students, it's important that people realize you may think you're messaging with somebody your age or somebody you know, or you felt like you've developed a relationship with. Unfortunately, with social media, you never know who's on the other end of that, of that connection, right? You don't know who that is. Are they even in America? Are they even who they are? Is it a male, female? How old are they? I mean, no one ever really knows. We have an amazing program 
here in Jeffco called Chizo that comes out and does amazing supports for schools and can answer questions for parents around all the online media issues that, that we see around kids and, and some of the predators that are out there. But it's important to know sextortion has become this issue. And it's not even just about sending more images. Oftentimes it's send me money or I'm going to release your image and I'm going to embarrass you and you're going to feel terrible because everybody's going to see this. Your parents, your friends, maybe you're on a, on a team. I'm going to release it to your coach, et cetera. So it's so important that uh, we have these discussions with our kids. I'm a parent, right? It's not the easiest discussion to have with your kids, but it's important and it's imperative for their protection that we talk about how extortion happens, but all it takes is one image, one person to say, okay, it's just you and me. I've known this person. We've been dating. It's okay to share one image. Well, guess what? If that dating doesn't go so well, and we see this a lot, there's a breakup and that breakup is not very cordial. And one of the side of each breakup says, okay, now I'm going to share it with all my friends because you did something to wrong me. So now that image you thought was going to be shared between you and one other is now shared with others across your school or, or across even the state or the city. And now the embarrassment, everything that comes with that, the stigma. What I worry so much about, even with my own kids is the worth that we see in kids today is based on your social media and things of people talking about either you're, you're a great person or we're going to talk great about you or you're not. And we oftentimes base our self-worth on what's said on social media. And those pressures, as I said, you know, and the anxiety that comes with, with social media attention has really pressured a lot of our kids into feeling like they have to do this to feel included. And that's just not the case. And that takes trusted adults and individuals to help educate them on why that is so inappropriate. Right. And again, only one in five parents are having these conversations with their kids. Um, it's super important. I mean, now that, you know, having been that really active parent, having these conversations, um, but all of these kids, our kids, even mine who's 18, have grown up with social media being a thing. And uh, they're our first digital generation. And those of us, you know, you and I, we don't think about it as much. We might use Facebook, you know, here and there, might use Twitter here and there, but um, we're on our phones more so working so um and our kids also see us working on our phone but they don't understand that we're not doing the same things on our phones that they are um completely different but you see rarely does a teenager or or tween these days not have a cell phone and have a cell phone in their in their hands on a regular basis um and because of this digital culture that's built with our kids not only are we seeing those anxiety increases with our kids and the need for acceptance and to post pictures like you know some of the other more popular friends we want to do the same we want to be accepted um but we're also seeing when kids turn 18 one of the bucket list items um is signing up for a tinder profile um <laughs> and i just recently learned that that's a thing you turn 18 you're legally old enough to um, get tattoos, you know, go buy lottery tickets and uh, and set up a Tinder profile. And if we don't have those conversations around safety and some of our kids who are 18 are in our schools. So meeting people publicly who you don't know, um, giving out too much of your personal information. And we know when we do the suicide prevention work too, this is a big one because, you know, the prefrontal cortex is not formed <laughs> fully yet. So we don't make the same choices at 18 or 20 that we do in our 40s and 50s, right? Well, I think another key point, as you mentioned, is, you know, we're not developed yet, right? That cortex is not, we're not making really good decisions or sound decisions oftentimes, you know, as young as we are and the decisions that are out there. But if you think about um, the digital revolution, it's not just the digital, I think it's just society in general. If you think about as a parent, I tell my kids, put everything you do on safe mode, safe search mode. Well, guess what? I've looked with my kids on safe search mode and they search something up and there's stuff in there that should not be. And, and so there's ways that kids and others have figured out how to filter information through any kind of safe mode, um, just about any firewall that you may have to protect your kids. And so it's so imperative that you're just involved that you're checking up on them more often because unfortunately just simply hitting safe mode, I found out does not work, right? 
and they're still getting some of that inappropriate information. And I think as we, I wouldn't call it the term brainwash, but the more they're exposed to this information and this new wave of how to feel accepted in society, the more they're going to push the boundaries to try and do something and be included. As you said, whether it's Tinder, meeting adults, oftentimes I hear now that it's okay to date older men. And, you know, that's just something that's accepted. And, and I'm hearing that from kids all, you know, all over the place and how they've just formed this new understanding that we're just living in this day-to-day -day world, right? We don't think about our future. We're living day to day. And we're going to do what supports us and what we want to do today and not worry about any potential hazards or things that come with the decisions we make. And so, as you said, those discussions are so important, but, you know, every kid can potentially find access to inappropriate stuff, no matter what you do. So you've got to be more involved, be a parent. Sometimes that means you got to have really difficult conversations and get kind of a little bit more into the world than you'd probably like to do at times but it's for their safety. And by doing that, you're protecting them from the potential really, really long, hard discussions that may have to happen in the future. Thank you again, Jeff. This is hugely important. Um, so very, very grateful for your conversations. And we encourage everyone to have those conversations, talk openly, and remember it's more important to be a parent than to be popular.